You are hearing background noise, maybe, from another streamer that I am currently watching that I must stop watching because, holy crap. That's and we have now had to stop her, and we are now on the stream. We will chill out for approximately uh, the number of seconds that we need to be chilling out for, uh, which appears to be 30, I think. This gives the hordes of people who do not watch the stream time to not watch the stream. and welcome to the stream. Today we will be making some minor improvements. I, I don't know what the hell we'll be doing. Let's take a look. Uh, we will be making some um, minor improvements to our uh, programs uh, that uh, give the occultations or eclipses, Jovian lunar eclipses. Um, if we are going to print out a time, I guess, we should probably be printing out both an ephemeral, uh, not an ephemeral, wow, an ephemeris time uh, that is used by NASA, so for, you know, the astronomers or whatever, and also maybe a more uh, visible time, which is not Unix time, because most people don't know how to read that, but sort of a, uh, maybe like a YYY, you know, um, I have this written down somewhere, yeah, this, which I call a star date, which is also how I do the times in my own stream, maybe something like that. I mean, that's a fairly compact format, and it's a format that if someone wanted to test with um, Stellarium, it gives them a pretty good, uh, pretty good date. Uh, so, um, the uh, last time I ran this, it actually took like over a day to run. I'm going to try running multiples on my main machine, uh, but it's going to take a while, so we're not going to be able to run them here because I do shut down this machine after I'm done streaming. Uh, and it won't be, we won't be getting the results today unless we're very, very lucky. Uh, and we're not, so that's not going to actually happen. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and go into, um, uh, and we, we actually need to do this with both the spice occultation program and the um, and the uh, the regular occultation program that we're looking at now. Uh, we're also going to try writing up uh, some of the answer. I know we don't actually have the answer yet. But there's a tremendous amount of things we're going to say in the answer that don't depend on the results of these programs. Uh, that's basically going to be a lot of caveats, uh, maybe some uh, Stellarium images. Uh, plus, we, we want to complain to NASA and Stellarium about the bad things we found while doing this, uh, while doing this project. Um, so we'll be doing that as well. Sounds like fun, huh? Okay, uh, let's see. So here's where we print. Whoa. All oh right, that's just the number of partial eclipses. That's fine. So now, um, we print the start of the partial eclipse, the middle of the partial eclipse, the start of the total eclipse, end of the total eclipse, end of the partial eclipse. Um, now, just to be inconsistent, I'm going to change these symbols. Oh, hang on. Apparently the code has been changed. P plus meaning partial starts. Um, T plus meaning uh, total starts. T minus meaning total ends. And P minus meaning partial ends. That seems a little bit better uh, than using E and S, uh, although it's, it's really not. It's the same thing exactly. Okay, and the thing we're going to do now is we're going to try to print out, instead of the Unix time, uh, we're going to try printing out something a little bit nicer. And um, uh, let's see, we want to do, um, we probably want to print the, well, okay, let's see. Got to be a little bit careful here because um, if we print a time that has a space in it, which we might do, um, then the... Um, the position of the ephemeris time would be ambiguous. We kind of want these four quantities we know are going to be printed with spaces between them, and they'll be the first four things printed, and that's a good thing. That's what we want. Um, whatever we're going to be print printing fifth is going to be the... Um, wait. Um, right. Whatever we're going to be printing fifth is going to be a string, and it could have spaces in it. It doesn't matter, because we just want to guarantee that the first four fields are the ones we, we really, uh, the ones we're going to use uh, in Perl or something, maybe, to determine how long the eclipses last, and all this other good sort of information about eclipses, which, in theory, you could do, you know, if, I, if someone wanted to teach me uh, R, we could do it with that. But, but it's a very good 
the good set of data is what we want. We want the data that is, um, that is we know the first four columns are, are, are valid data. The last column is just a pretty print, a pretty print of the data, which uh, if it isn't formatted quite right, doesn't matter because we're not going to look at it. Okay. So now, once again, I will follow my process of trying to cheat by looking at what I did before. And I have done this before for other answers. So let's see if I can find what the hell I'm doing. Probably not. I mean, had a good run, but all right, there we go. And let's go ahead and put it over here. Uh, this is kind of ugly because, yeah, let's see. I guess I can do this for right now because if somebody else chats, I'll see it. That's going to be not working as well once we, um, once people start chatting, which <laughs> that's funny because I actually said it like it might happen. Okay, so there we go. So now I have these all easily accessible. Okay, so let's go in over here and let's, I think it's time FMT, but let's, we'll, we'll find out real quickly. And do I have a grep minus I here? I could have sworn, oh, wow. Is it time FM? Time? Um, let's see. Let's look at our printfs, and, and some of them will have, like, strings in them. Printf, and now we will do an fgrep for percent %s. This is so lame. Um, and bc zodiac. Okay, and I think zodiac is, I know, it prints out things in real time. I mean, it prints out things in the kind of time people want to see. Uh, calendar time. And what do we have here? Tim format, that's right. Um... And let's see, Jesus Christ. And Tim format, by the way, is, uh, is something that's built into, uh, built into Spice that lets you format the time. I, it's not a function, it's like a, well, actually, hang on, what is the function here? Let's see what the function is here, because it is, it is, it is uh, timeout. <laughs> wow, or Tim out, not timeout, it's Tim. We have to get rid of Tim. Okay, hold on just one second. We had a, an issue. Now, actually, I think... Um, uh, whatever the hell happened, it doesn't affect me, so we're going to ignore it. It was pretty loud, though. Um, all right, sorry, but the distracted me. Right, it's called Tim Out, and it lets you format your time string. And I have too many things open. No, 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 no. This is me. Too much. Horizons we still need. Uh, this we still want. Um... Yeah, I'm kind of being icky about this. So let's let's go ahead and just open a new. Um, I really need to close some of these tabs off. I I, I realize that. Okay. All right, here we are. The reference guide. Tim out will tell us um, the time output, how to do that, and they they basically explain this right here. Uh, we we're going to use um, yeah. So they 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 use stuff like this. Um, month, day, year all this good stuff. Um, so I think we probably can use, um, I don't know if I want to use a macro, but I think we, we can definitely use a star. Oh, we can definitely use a string. Um, so we'll say char star format equals, God, I hope this works. I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, and we can actually be a little bit careful on how we cheat because we want the numerical month. So Y Y Y Y. I'm almost sure it's M M. D D. And by the way, notice for example that Y Y Y Y has a meaning, whereas Y Y would not here have a meaning. Um, and they don't, for some reason, use um, S E for seconds. They do use this. Um, and of course, wow, I'll just jump around randomly to confuse you. Okay, so we want this to be our minute second. Okay, and then to get it, uh, let's see. And then to get it, we have to print over here. Um, I think that, let's see, we need three parameters, one of which is kind of pointless, but because they because in C you have to kind of limit how, you know, you have to be careful how big your output is. Um, ephemeris time, picture, the, the picture is, um, is really just the string that describes how to format the time. 
So uh, let's just get this over here. So uh, I'm kind of tempted not to try to put it in line, but it's not really that bad. So the time is the beginning time. The picture is the format, and that is a pointer. The length out. Um, oh, shoot. This does not return a string. This returns, it puts a string into something. God damn, that is ugly. And I am now wondering if we can, you know, because oh, we always want to create functions anytime we can. Um, I, sorry, I want to create functions anytime we can. All right, so um, this is kind of ugly. Do I have a function? I don't think I have a function in bclibh uh, that actually does uh, does time formatting. Tim, yeah, it, there's not. Okay, um, so I guess with this function we can just kind of. Um, oh man, there's there there's so many reasons not to do this. I, I'm going to call it star date. I'm going to almost immediately regret doing that. Um, well, let's go ahead and do it. So car star star date. And by the way, returning a string is not necessarily trivial in, um, in, um, whatever the hell we're in, in, in C. And so we want ET, all this other crap that timeout needs, I don't think we need it because we, we, we know what we're doing. Um, yep, this is, this is going to kill us. Star store. And unfortunately, I'm learning a little bit of C here. So what we want here is we want um, we want an array of characters which we're going to call result, and we're going to make it 500 characters long. It could actually be longer than that because we're not going to really use anywhere near these characters. It just has to be long enough to um, to hold the result, and then we're going to say uh, et picture picture is going to be. And here we're just going to copy this from the other program. And again, this is kind of bad because if I wanted to be a little bit better with this, I could allow them to the user to pick a format. And there's probably a way of doing that and defaulting it, even though it's a even though it's a string. But that's like way way beyond uh, what I want to do today. I, I just want to get this because I do want to start getting this program running as quickly as possible uh, because it does take a while to run, and we do want to get the results, even though we're going to be focusing on other things today. Okay, so we have Tim out of C. Take the ephemeral time. Um, take the picture, which is the format. The only thing I forgot about is what the, I think the length is, it's an input, and the length of the output string plus one. Um, and I think we can overestimate on this. This just means we have to put a boundary on it. So we'll say 1,023, because the, you know, I actually this is probably 1,000, no, I'll go ahead and make it 1,024. We're never going to get anywhere near that long, and the result is where we want to put it. And then, this, this is where we, um, because we're returning an array, I think we can just return result, and it's actually going to be a pointer to result. I also think that um, this is a terrible idea, but let's, let's see what happens. So we're going to test it here, star date 0, printf 0, and this should be like 2000, the year 2000 at the beginning of the, of the year, maybe at noon. It's, it's, it's very, very close to the beginning of the year 2000. Okay, and then we're going to do an exit minus 1 because we are just testing. And, all right, I don't think we'll even compile, by the way. That's my guess, but let's find out. Uh, yep. Type of ET defaults to int. What? No. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, because I didn't bother to, yeah, cause, you know, <laughs> why bother to actually give declare types? <sighs> yeah. C is very, very picky. Uh, in function start date, returns address of local variable. Okay. That is not good. So, oh boy. Here's where it's going to get ugly. I don't think static is what, I, I mean, I could do static, I think. 
Yeah. Now, now, but I have no idea what I'm doing. So if anyone's like, hey, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I do not. I think static will hold it in for the amount of time we need it to print, and then it'll it'll change the value the next time. But this is still like beyond. Oh man. Format percent f, but argument is char star. Yep, that is correct. This should be percent s. And let's make less. Oh, and now it's going to complain because in the in the actual body of the program, um, I have these things that are going to print as strings, uh, but I don't have them defined yet. So this we can just put in an empty string for right now too, as a placeholder. And hopefully this will now compile. Okay. Alrighty, let's see if this compiles. Let's see if we can get to the right window. And we have... Booyah. So now the only thing we expect is output is a very nicely formed... No! Needed to convert between unit or not found... Delta... Oh yeah, and the reason this isn't working is because we actually need to have kernels in place before we can, because there's like a, a there's like a one second, you know, the leap seconds actually change what the ephemeris time is when converted to regular time. So we cannot put it up this high. We actually need to put it after we at least load in the, the standard kernels, which there it is. So we can put it in here and we should be fine. And let's see if that continues to make and then hopefully ru even runs. I'm very excited. Okay. Oh yeah, and again, it doesn't really matter because we're not using it in the correct way, but... And the zero time is 2000. That's actually correct, because of a leap second, there is a 60... It's probably a 64 second discrepancy, but it might be a 65 second discrepancy uh, between ephemeris time and uh, what we would call sort of clock or calendar time. And that's all because of leap seconds. Um, now to make sure that this star date function actually works, uh, and, and more than once, let's do, oh, I'm getting excited now, 100, 1,000 seconds, 10,000, uh, you know what, let's do this, 1,000 seconds, 1 million seconds, 1 billion seconds? That was a little Dr. Evil there for you. Okay. So now this, this, I mean, this is just more for fun, but also to make sure that the star date function can be run more than once and the static variable doesn't kill us. Okay, and it is uh, a thousand seconds in, not too bad. A million seconds in, 13 days. A billion seconds is to the end of time. This uh, value here, we don't need to worry about it. Um, uh, this, the, the YYYY component will not go beyond the year 10,000 and it won't even do a BC time. But that's okay for us because we're limiting ourselves to, um, it's not really okay for the star date function, so we need to mention that, but it is okay for our uses because we're limiting ourselves to 1800 to 2150-ish, so we're not, not, not a huge deal for us. But I will put a to-do, um, allow dates beyond 0 to 10,000, or I guess I'll say 9999. Um, and this is, probably should document this, shouldn't I? I'm not going to, but I should. Okay. So we're now happy that uh, we can actually don't have to go through this uh, ugly Tim format command each time because we've shortened it. Um, and let's go ahead and use it then. Okay. Start eight. And that's why I did it, so I can do that voice. Start eight. B E G. The partial eclipse has begun. Start eight. Beggar. The total eclipse has to be on start date. I'm kind of getting sick of it now. This is when the total eclipse ends, and this is when the um, um, the partial eclipse ends. Okay, solid. All right, let's see if that does what we want. And I think this is what I want. Now, the only reason we have to be careful because I plan to start it running in the background in the other machine. Uh, coverage, okay, that's fine. A number of how many there are. Oops, we don't want that old. Yeah, we're just gonna look at like a few of them for right now. Between 2000 and the end of 2019, is this still too big? Uh, 
hang on one second here while I... That's still too big, damn it. All right, fine, 2002. 413. And it does look like our, um, our right-hand column is giving us a star date. If it gets up to like 2001, 12 something, we will know it's correct, although I don't know if I want to wait for it that long now because I'm freaking lazy. Um, damn, this is... We're putting in some time here. I mean, we are running a virtual machine, uh, you know, and this there's other constraints here, but this is still pretty slow. Uh, in fact, so slow that I might want to kill it before it hits 2000. Okay, whatever, it's dead. All right, I'm going to go on to my other machine here. I know you can't see this, and this is... I'm a terrible person because I'm going to do this without you seeing it. Um, but I want to get these things started. Um, and I, and I, this is just, I'll just do some banter here. Uh, I want to get these started because they, they're they going to take a while. And I don't think we'll get an answer today, but we, I do kind of want to keep them, you know, in the background. Okay, so we need to be careful here. BC occultations. What, I'm going to see if I can repeat the command I did yesterday. Except yesterday it didn't really work because um, I was uh, I was not printing the same thing as we're printing today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to limit it to a time frame, just to make sure the format is correct. Because I did remake it and stuff, but you know you never know with these things. Coverage, blah 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 blah. This looks good. This looks really good. Okay. And so now we're going to go from. 1850 to 2100 and we're going to do that for IO Eclipse is 501 again none of this makes sense to you and it shouldn't 502 503 and 504 this means nothing to you can't see anything I'm doing here but in any case we have now begun the four jobs that will ultimately spit out um, that will ultimately spit out all of the uh, lunar eclipses on Jupiter between 1850 and 2100, which I decided was our, which I decided, no, I didn't decide that, uh, which is our coverage interval. Um, I'm pretty sure. God, I hope it is. Otherwise, we're screwed. Um, um, but that is not, this is wrong, though. We decided that our correct interval was... Um, um, the other interval in the comments. Well, let's see if we can find it. This is... I am such a doofus. Okay, and I, I'm almost sure it was 18... 1850, actually, not even 1800. Yep, there it is, 1850 to 2100. Solid. So those programs are now cranking away. Okay, so now the, the sort of the big part of this, even though we don't have the uh, results yet, we'll be actually printing out the answer. We want to, uh, we want to um, answer the question. There's a ton of things we need to be mentioning here. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is, you know, avoid answering the question. We're going to complain to Stellarium about um, not showing uh, Jovian lunar eclipses. So let's let's go ahead and do that now. And we first need to check that it's not already a known complaint. And uh, so let's go ahead and go to Stellarium.org or wherever they keep Stellarium. Come on. Uh, I think it's Stellarium.org. There it is. Um, and so the question we want to ask is, where is your freaking bug reports? Bug. Get support, report bugs, request new features. That's where we want to be. Okay. <sighs> Looter eclipses. This might We might need to dig a little bit before uh, we find what we're looking for. Display of Earth Shadow, okay. Um, Jupiter Eclipses, maybe that's where we're going with this. Ooh. Let's look at the closed issues. Maybe some of them decided they don't want to do that. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, here it is. Um, this is not what we're complaining about. Now what's interesting here is they're claiming that the um, 
that Jupiter's eclipses do show things. So that's actually kind of interesting. Um, bug, low importance. Okay, so according to them, apparently shadows are working. Um, so let's look quickly at our earlier collection of of bad things. Um, images. I love that we don't it it pictures. That's where it puts it. Okay, and I oh should I use XV? No, I should use Fay. Oh oh well. Can't use Fay. I will use XV. Okay, that's not what shows it. That's not what shows it. That's not what shows it. Uh, that's not what shows it. Still not what shows it. I think this is the one that shows it. Uh, so we have I at a magnitude of ten point. I don't know if that's it. Ten point one point seven eight, twelve point two zero, and. I think that is the proof we're looking for. Let me, however, I'm no longer sure. So this says we go from a magnitude of 1.78 to 12.20, and I'm pretty sure that's like one second, and Io certainly doesn't appear eclipsed to me. And then, oh, the same thing happens for Metis. Uh, one second later, the magnitude drops correctly, but, um, yeah, and then when it comes out of the eclipse, the same thing happens. The magnitude increases, meaning the brightness increases, and we have someone in, no we don't, um, and the brightness increases uh, greatly. So it does know when it's out of an eclipse, but it's not showing the eclipse. However, however, we are going to, I, I, I'm pretty sure I had the, um, the uh, sun sh show solar shadows on. Um, but you know what? Let me double check that. Let me just go ahead and check our settings here. Uh, and I will go ahead and save them this time, uh, and not yet, but let's see. Information, all available, do all that stuff. Navigation, system time and date, I guess that's fine. Algorithm of Delta T, that's probably okay. Uh, select single, show nebula, auto zoom, disk viewpoint, show flip buttons, gravity labels. No, I think we're okay with not doing that. Um, I don't think, do we want to select a single constellation? I don't know what that means. Anyway, we probably don't. Uh, this is going to be really annoying for us, but um, we'll leave it like that for right now. Okay. Scripts. Nothing interesting there. Plugins. So am I looking at the wrong thing then? Um, I might be. So this is F2. The F4 gives it a whole different set of configurations. Um, we don't want twinkle or dynamic eye adaption, that's just because we're using it in a more scientific way. We don't want artificial meters, meteors, planet markers. Don't know what that is, but we probably need that. Simulate light speed, scale the moon, we want accuracy. Auto select landscapes, I think we don't need that. Uh, limit magnitudes, no, we do not want to limit magnitudes. Is there a way to save all these options? There must be, right? Um, Hopefully on the last page. Markings, we don't want any of the grids showing up. We don't need any of these things showing up. We don't need the constellations showing up unless we tell them to show up. Um, and do we want, I think, um, stereographic is sort of the default, even though it's not the one on top. Landscape. Um, yeah, we're fine with this one. Star lore. Okay, so I've missed something somewhere that says show solar shadows. Because I n remember seeing that before. Don't need to show the atmosphere, markings, landscape, star lore. Use the sky culture as default, that's fine. Okay, so what have I done wrong here? That's the location, that's fine. That's the date and time, that's the help. Okay. Information? Navigation. Uh, tools. You would think it might be there. Scripts, no. Plugins, no. Let's go ahead and actually save what we have in terms of settings. F3, I'm pretty sure it doesn't do anything interesting. F4, 
All right, one more time. Stars, retroscale, Milky Way brightness, light pollution. We're not going to be looking at refraction, limiting mag magnitudes, labels and markers, planets and satellites. Hmm. Okay, and we will now use our friend Mr. Google. Or actually, we might be able to, well, let's use Mr. Google. So, Solar Shadows Stellarium. I know there was an option somewhere. Um... Hmm. Show Sun Shadow? Show Shadows. Um... Am I actually in a version that doesn't have this? But it can't be. I could have sworn I saw it yesterday. Um, Alright, let, let's see if this blog entry helps us out. Um, okay. So... Okay, so this is confusing to me. Um, why can't we see the uh, shadows cast by the uh, by everything? It's not an option here, I'm pretty sure. We'll go ahead and go to this mount. Um, okay. So what are we going to do here? This is this is the part of the stream that I really hate, where I have to kind of think of what to do next. Um, we know that if we go from Jupiter, yeah, this this bugs me. If we go to Jupiter, we know we don't see the shadows because it, we just see a magnitude decrease. Now, actually, let me see. We have Stellarium point zero point twelve point four. This might be a good time to not upgrade. Never a good time to upgrade. Latest version is nineteen three. Oh, I'm gonna hate myself for this. Um, I don't even know what an app image is. Oh. I'm, I'm tempted. Let's see what this is. Alright, so maybe we're far enough behind on Stellarium that we can't really complain about a version that's seven behind. If we are going to complain, we need to complain of the, uh, the latest one. Okay, and let's see what this is. This is a, um, it's not done yet, but when it's done... Oh, it appears to be an executable. That's actually very nice. Um, there it is. So can we just do this? Wait. I guess we need to chmod plus exit. So it's executable. Ooh. Ignore and suppress this notice and try to continue integrated mode. Ignore? Okay, so already bad things have happened. The old JSON satellite file is not... I don't know why the hell it uses this as its default, but okay. So now, it looks like we might actually... Now we're using the latest version, and we... If this works well enough, I'll make a note to myself. Um... Alias Stellarium to latest version, because we don't want Stellarium now to go to the, the one we have installed. Okay, so so far this isn't too bad. Um, now I guess we... Why the hell is Algol moving? Stop that. Okay, so now I guess we're going to look... I'm going to see if, if my uh, programs have generated even one... Oh, they have. Aw awesome. Um, and again, you can't see them. I know. That's fine. Um, let's see if they've generated one that's kind of in the ballpark of today. Um, no, the latest one we're going to get is going to be uh, ne a November 27th of uh, 1954. So let's go to... <whistles> 1954... 
November 7th. We'll get the exact time here. Just what the hell? I didn't mean to do that. There. And now we want to go to. I'm gonna bet you anything it didn't keep my. Oh, it kept my Jupiter Center. I'm so happy. And by the way, Jupiter is covered with grass like this, and most people don't know that. Let's go ahead and get rid of the ground. Um, and let's go ahead and look for Io. Seriously? This is better? What? This one. Oh, come on. What the hell? I can't even tab through it now. Alright, let me try that again. F3. I think I have to retype it to get what I want. There we go. That IO. Alrighty, IO is looking... Jesus Christ, they give a lot of information now. It's only 4% illuminated, so this is a... Um, this is not a lunar eclipse of IO. This is clearly wrong, but again, the time it might be important here because uh, this moves very quickly, of course. Um, and we're saying at 2348... 16, um, well, we're saying as early as 2008, I, yeah, I know you can't see this, 2008 or whatever, so let's, let's just uh, cruise a little bit forward here, and, and give it a little bit of hope here, so there it goes, Io, I don't think we're going to get what we're looking for, uh, illuminated diffraction, it's getting, it's getting even newer, actually, um, so this is elongation, and... I, that was presumably the, the elongation. So what's going to happen now? I was going to get fuller and fuller. A little bit faster than that. And okay. So right around here, we would be expecting to see a lunar eclipse. Um, which is bad because my program says otherwise. So let's see, we're on 1108, we, we have this, what the hell? Oh, did I, was I going backwards in time? I was. Um, so my program says no eclipses whatsoever for, I'm sorry, I am so sorry. Um, this, the, the program I'm using is actually, I mean, I mean the, I'm generating results for all of them, but the one that's giving the results that are the most recent is Callisto. And now we're up to uh, December 14th, 1979, which is, I was alive then, so it's a good time. I mean, it's not what I mean, but you know what I mean. It's a good time that, in the sense that it's much closer to the current time. And was it 14? It was 14. And this time we'll actually look at the correct moon, which is Callisto, which is also easier to find because it has a much longer name. Okay, ooh. Oh, what the hell is Callisto eclipsing? Oh, it's a star. Okay, that that's actually like randomly exciting. Illuminated 99.7, and according to me, interesting things will happen at 0441, and we are right now beyond that time, so that's not cool. Let's go back a day, and let's keep ourselves centered on Callisto. Okay, so what I'm saying, according to my program, which I know you can't see the results, at 4.41 on, um, on the next day, there will be a partial eclipse of Callisto as viewed from Jupiter. Let's, let's watch this happen. Dun, 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 dun. And, oh, that was really nice. Let's watch that again. A little bit slower motion. Okay, and it's looking pretty good here. Uh, we can see the um, the eclipse of Callisto. It's starting a little bit earlier than we said, but that's that's okay. So now we can. So um, major changes to my answer now will be required. Uh, I will mention here sensitive to version of Stellarium. I finally used 19.3 uh, and it works and it shows the eclipses okay fantastic so
so apparently my computer is like overheating now. Hang on. Come on. You, it, it's come on. I'm going to take a quick look to see what's causing all this. The damn occultation programs are sucking up quite a bit of CPU there. But I don't care. You know? They should be doing that. All right. So it's sensitive to version of Stellarium. We can, you can use Stellarium uh, to check. So now this brings up an interesting question. Um, if I run this program with Metis, the 16th moon, are we still able to see eclipses of Metis from Jupiter? And we can just start off saying very simply, you know, let's go to Metis. And illuminated 98%, That's, but it's probably in eclipse right now. It's like spends like 40% of its time eclipsed. So let's... Okay. Okay, why the hell is it, it has some trouble knowing who it is? Um, okay, so now looks we might have some actual hope for, um, for finding eclipses of Metis. Um, so let's try that. Again, this is the one using my sort of version, which is not the, um, which is not the same as the uh, version that's used by uh, the, the the occultation by NASA, which is a completely different thing. All right, so here we go. We're going to go from um, Jesus Christ in the year 2020. This year, for those of you who are not sure what year it was, wow. Okay, so we're going to say it enters partial eclipse on the 13th at 1:30 p.m. Um, Let's go ahead and start at 12. Um, okay. Ooh, that's one freaking shiny object. Okay, so is it... Now, we're going to be careful here. Uh, I don't think this is actually an eclipse. This is just... It's not, it's not illuminated because it's, you know, like our moon goes through phases as well. It's just a phase, man. Um, so we're saying at 1330, it will begin partial phase. And within two seconds, it'll go to full phase. So that's that's kind of interesting. And Metis, by the way, is not a freaking sphere. It's very, very ellipsoid. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. That works better with tracking. Okay. So why is why are we getting like this? Um oh, that is bad. If I zoom out. It's 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 illuminated, but if I zoom in, it's not. That that there's something funky going on here, and the fact that it doesn't know Jesus freaking Christ, the fact that it, the name keeps jumping around, is also not great. Okay, so the idea here is it's you know its illumination is increasing a little bit faster, um, as it uh, but when it, before it becomes full. Jupiter itself should eclipse it. So it's a lunar eclipse, which only happened during a full moon. Although for Metis, that is a fairly long chunk of time uh, that, that Jupiter's sh shadow is big enough that it's going to eclipse it. Okay, here we go. We're still about an hour out, so maybe we need to speed this up a little bit. But the illuminated fraction, the um, elongation, is approaching 180 very quickly. The hell? Okay. That was kind of weird. Okay, and oh, okay, so so that I think was an eclipse. Well, let's find out. Okay, so at twelve fifty nine oh seven. Um, I think that is where the partial. I mean, we we say that the eclipse lasts like two seconds. So I mean, I mean, we say that you know the partial phase only lasts two seconds. So 12:59 versus what we were saying is um, what the hell were we saying? Um, oh right, we did this on this machine. Uh, we were saying 13:30. Um, so we're off by quite a bit there. Uh, 
by about half an hour. So that's not that's not good, but it could just be the difference between VSOP. Ooh, sorry about that. Between VSOP and Spice. So what we actually okay, well, let's go ahead and bring up and let's go ahead and bring up F5. Let's go ahead and look at the you know change the time one second at a time. So 12, 11, 10, and you know we can see that the, the gets eclipsed really quickly. Um, super galactic, Jesus Christ, there's a lot. Uh, illuminated fraction, 96. So the illuminated fraction here remains 96.5, 96 96.4, uh, and the albedo doesn't appear to change either. So even though it's eclipsed, you know, it doesn't really change, it doesn't really update these parameters. Um, and so now, when it comes out of, so this is not a great, um, the method I'm using is not a great predictor of eclipses for Metis. But now the question is, the spice, the other thing that I wrote, the spice, um, the spice occultations, let's see what it says. Let's see what times it gives out. And if it gives out more accurate times, um, right, and this one is actually not yet giving out Unix times. We, we could just do date minus D or whatever, but since we want to fix this one anyway, let's go ahead and fix uh, BC occultations dot, um, uh, let's go ahead and fix BC occultations. So let's fix BC occultations spite, oh, BC spice occultations rather, to uh, output in the same format as uh, BC occultations. And my machine is, I hope people can, can see what I'm doing. I hope the, the stream is going okay. There is quite a bit of activity on my machine because it apparently thinks I've asked to do a big job of computing these occultations. It's a piece of crap. All right. So first of all, let's make sure that we're, we first look for any eclipse, which is fine. And then, Oh, so we're inside of here. We're not even doing the uh, the second. Uh, we're not looking for like a total eclipse or whatever. So we've got to be careful here. Um, we got to be careful here. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for a. Um, uh, okay. So confirm. These are just. These are just. Okay. Good. 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 Here it is. We're looking for occultations of any type. We probably want to get this down to partial eclipses, which which might be the one the thing that we have now. But let's go ahead and get our let's go ahead and get. Um, I'm tempted to do close other tabs because we're just getting really ugly now. Um, but I won't. I want to keep that one going. This one no. This one no. Here it is. O C T L or is it O C L T? There it is. Find occultation, and then there's one that tells you the type of the occult. So let's see what these occultation types are. Uh, I think they go from zero to four. Oh, here it is. Indicates the type of occultation that is to be found. Note that transits are considered to be a type of occultation. Ooh, shiny, my stream. Oh, you can't see that, never mind. Um, full. But as seen from the location of the user in the occulted body is completely annular. That's like a transit. Partial any. Okay. Case and leading. Okay, so any and then so. Um, so for our case, we do want any for the, you know, for the partial eclipse starting and ending. But I think we want full. Uh, for when the lunar eclipse becomes full because the, the body has to be um, fully occulted. There has to be no sun arriving at the target point. So let's go ahead and... Um, so this is fine. I, I put 3600 question mark. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the other uh, BC occultations. And let me go ahead and do a quick save to get because we... Um, uh, because I want the, uh, the version of BC occultations that we have to be saved to get because it is it is a good working version. Okay. And okay, so let's see what we're doing here. So what we're doing here is we are 
So here, okay, and here the printf is going to be broken into two printfs, one for the beginning and one for the end. Um, let me be a little bit careful here. So the so we're, we're this isn't really complete. We, we we sort of we sort of biffed this one in terms of completeness. It actually prints out a lot of crap right now. But let's go for this. We want to print out the three. And here we want to say the partial eclipse is beginning. Uh, we want the uh, FM wrist time, and then we want the start date. So that will be almost all this stuff. The stuff is going to be like, and then beg, and then start date beg. Okay. Um, get positions. So this is. Um, we're going to hope that Stellarium's new positions are closer to Spices, so we don't need to do this right now. And then, we need to print at the end, um, partial ends. And again, the same thing, this time with end and start date of end. So that will print out our um, our partial eclipses uh, here, and then what we want is the within the partial eclipse, we want to look for a total eclipse, and to do that, I think we're going to need, um, yeah, we're going to need another window called CN Finder. In fact, let's see what other variables we're going to need here, because I know we we I kind of got silly with the names here, but that's okay. Um, CN fine, we'll just copy CN finer. There we go. Resulter. Okay, which is to hold the results. And then I know I had to add some doubles as well. There we are. The doubles are now. Oh wow. Where am I begging in doubles? Aha! So I guess I made a decision to declare them as I needed them instead of, I'm going to cheat a little bit and put them up here just for consistency with the other program. Um, and it'll be beggar ender. Okay. And so now I think that is enough to go to what we're doing. CN finer, when we use it is, oh come on, not CN finger. CN finder and we use it over here. So this is this is where we're gonna go and say P plus start of eclipse and now create a window for the partial eclipse to find if there's a total eclipse inside the partial eclipse. Say that five times fast. So we create this window inside of CN finder and here we do not use GFUDs. We are gonna use the occultation function with I think almost the uh, the same parameters, but not quite the same parameters. Um, so this time we're not, we don't want any, we want full, or is it full or total? What do they call it? Full. Um, planet frame, sun name, ellipsoid, factor, light time. And here we're going to go down to look into one second, uh, because we are, uh, this is a very short period of time when there's a partial eclipse. We can afford to look more deeply for a full eclipse. So this is going to go into CN finer. Um, and in Resulter. Okay, so now if there are results, we need to print them out. If there aren't results, obviously we don't, so we're just going to copy this. Almost verbatim, I'm tempted to combine these two, two programs, because I think the only real difference is we use, um, we use uh, GF Occult here, and we use uh, GF, um, something else there. What, what, what do we use there? We use GF, uh, FUD, we use GFUDs, which is a user-defined function. Okay, um, um, is this like inherently correct because we're using the same variables? So if there is more than one case where we found a full eclipse, in other words, there's one full eclipse, total eclipse, we will print out its times like this. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And I think at this point, since we do have a copy saved, we can get rid of all of this commented crap. But let me make sure it's all actually commented because, ooh, 
I'm just going to rely on the fact that I, I'm pretty sure all this is crap. It's outside the main and it's not doing anything. I, I'm going to feel really bad if it turns out that this breaks something. Oh! Okay. Alrighty, let's see if we can do a nice little make here. Which one of my windows is in the right place? None of them, I think. Uh, Astra. Alright, because I disconnect and disconnect stuff each time. Okay, so let's do a make to less. Let's make sure that both of our programs uh, are going to compile. Unused variable LT, sun pause, and planet pause. Okay. That's cool. And that's because I think we were going to print them out originally and we're not anymore. I don't, I thought LT was still being used somewhere, but maybe not. And I'm feeling so funky, we're going to, uh, we're going to get rid of them. Wherever the hell it is, we declare them. Um, oh, I guess because we don't, we don't bother to print them out anymore, um, they are unused. Again, removing variables that are unused that I might want to use again is not a great idea. We'll do it. All right, spice occultation zero, and I think occultations is already, um, occultations compiled earlier hasn't changed. Okay, come on. Excuse me. All right, let's take a look here. So these are the core, these are the eclipses. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Um, also, um, after that, we do need to clear it out because um, because we only want one result in CN Finder each time. So we, we, we remove it. <sighs> you could probably argue that this remove... This removes the... Yeah. Anyway. This removes the little test we did. So let's do that again. Um, Oh yeah, so now I gotta go over here and do make less. I give up. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a look. Okay. Fantastic Rooney. And we're going to stop it right here. So now, according to this, the partial eclipse, using their occultation formula, begins at 1330. Um, did I minimize Stellarium? I think I did, yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so once again, uh, this is 1303, not 1330. So it actually looks like these results are going to come in very similar to the ones from... I mean, I'm actually tempted to, to run both and see what the what the results are. Let's do that. So BC Spice Occultations, um, temp SO for Spice Occultations 1, and then... Um, yeah, apparently there's enough of them in 2020 to really take some chunky time to run. Not happy about that. Okay, well, let's let's cheat. I'm going to say 2020.1, which means one-tenth of the way into the year. Uh, that should be more than enough. And I'll do is use a T so I can see what the hell's going on. Okay. Okay. That's one-tenth of a year is going to be like 1.2 months. We're going to start to get as far as early... Um, early February here before it stops, but I think that's, I can accept that. Still much longer than I wanted to run. And then we're going to do, then we're going to do, don't look at the right side of the screen because you can't see it. Then we're going to do O, meaning the one without uh, spice, and then we're going to compare them, and then God willing, right, because I misspelled it, BC occultations. And then, God willing, we're going to see that they are very similar, which suggests that, you know, we're getting very similar results for Metis, um, probably because it's so small. I don't, I don't think it's a huge, huge planet. 
Um, it's a huge moon, and it isn't. It's a very small moon. So now, let's go ahead and look at our O1. There's more than one eclipse on O1. 13, but we're, we'll, we'll narrow it down starting there. Wow. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess we'll look at the uh, one that goes from 06, 07. And that's going to require egrep, but I think that's by default it'll do egrep. Okay, so temp, oh, this one says Partial starts at 626, two seconds later the total starts, total ends, total, okay. This says, okay, so the difference here with the stack function, not the stack function, the spice function, six seconds, zero seconds, one second, five seconds. Not a big deal. So anyway, that's how we would, uh, that's how we would do it, but unfortunately Stellarium disagrees with us, which, um, honestly, I don't know what to do about that. Um, so now the the way one way we can check this here is uh, we can now go to Metis and see if the uh, the sun is eclipsed everywhere on Metis as viewed from Jupiter. That's that's one way to do it. Um, and so let's do that. That's not a great way to do it because I think that if they're using different positions for Metis and and Jupiter, the, it's not going to really matter. Um, it's going to show the sun eclipsed here, which it does. Oh, actually, hang on, actually, is that the sun? No, of course it's not. Um, that would have been nice, though. The sun... Okay. So it's showing the sun just starting to be eclipsed. And this... Oh, and I thought I'd gotten rid of the ground earlier. Okay, so there's the... What the hell? So there's the sun. Being not like... Um, and let's watch it get eclipsed. So we say the, the... You know, everywhere on... I guess what we're saying is there's going to be a total eclipse of the sun everywhere on Metis at a given time. So now there's a total eclipse here. And, you know, maybe on the rest of Metis, but okay. So what we're finding here is suckiness. Based, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to look at the... This is the. This is also suckiness, but let's go ahead and look at the... Since the one I've pulled... Well, actually, sorry. Let me... Let me babble incoherently for a while, and let's look at the 12-13 eclipse. Um, interesting. Oh, yeah, they both do show it. Um, and I guess if we want to see the end of the eclipse, we should do that. So they say it's going to start at uh, 1.30 p.m. Clearly, um, clearly, Stellarium just doesn't agree with this. It just, it's just going to use a different, a different time frame altogether. Um, so now another question here is, um, which of Jupiter's moons can we actually get results for? I mean, I've sort of given up on this because we're not going to get good results. But hey, when you can't get good results, go for some bad results. So which of these can give us even bad results, just in case somebody wants to do this? And just so we can sort of pad out our answer by showing how clever we are and saying, you cannot look at eclipses for this because there is no, like, spice file for it, man. And we have to do it in that sort of nerdy California accent kind of thing. All right. So let's see here. And in this case, it really shouldn't matter. Um... So that runs pretty quickly. So, ooh. That's not what I expected. Oh, right, because there has to be at least one in this time frame. Um, okay. So I guess the correct thing to do is look at the kernels we have from for Jupiter, which should be Jupstar or something. Um, we can read, at some point it'll be easier just to create a separate file called, you know, comment dot, the, the comment file, but let's see, additional constants, not what we want, we want bodies on the file, that's, that's the thing we're looking for, 
Um, you'll notice that it goes from 501 to 505. 514, do we have 506 on there? Uh, we don't probably in here. Let's see if it's in the other one. Bodies on file. 506. Uh, and, oh wow, this one goes, okay, this one, this one kind of chunks it up here a little bit. Um, okay, so it does look like, in theory at least, we could find eclipses of these other moons. Um, of course, one question we're going to ha have to ask at some point is, uh, can we actually even see these moons from Jupiter when they're not being eclipsed? Like, Philo, this looks like the kind of thing that turns purple in base, but it's a different, it's a different thing. Okay, so let's go back to Jupiter. Um, nope, we need to do over here. And I'm guessing these moons are too faint to see. Um, anyway, so I don't really know why we're doing it, but... Uh, I guess it's to see whether... We're okay, hang on, I didn't mean to do that. I mean to do that. F3. F... Yeah, this is something I'm not going to spell. Philoph. So, like, first few letters of philosophy. And apparently, Stellarium does not even know about it. Yeah. So, if it is the moon of Jupiter, it is kind of a lost moon. Although, this actually sort of makes sense because, um, really, these, this is a very, very min Although, it does have some of the more minor moons here. Um, but not, not that minor, maybe. Okay. So, uh... Okay. So now... Let me check on the other machine to see how we're doing. It's still cranking away. Um... Oh, I think it finished one of them. Hang on. Yeah, Calypso. Not Cal Callisto. I'm losing my mind has 3,057 partial eclipses in that time, and it looks like it actually got them all. Yeah, it did. So we're done with Callisto, if anyone is interested, uh, which I can't imagine anyone is. Um, okay, so we have this, we have this, we have that. Um, so now we need to start working on our answer. Um, although a lot of the things I plan to say on the answer uh, because Stellarium, I was using an older version, those things aren't relevant anymore. Um, they're still relevant to Metis, but we're actually not going to be looking at Metis. And we'll put that in somewhere as, w as part of the answer, why we don't want to look at smaller moons, or at least why it's not going to work as well uh, for smaller moons. Okay. So let's go back to the README stream here. Because I'm lost at this point. Um, now this is this is where we think that the, the um, yeah. So there's two things we kind of want to write to NASA. One is we want to confirm that the uh, occultation function does not give eclipses at the surface of planets, only at the uh, center. And two, we don't think the eclipse of uh, you know the May 2021 is really a full eclipse for the reason. Now one thing I do need to check here is I write this guy a lot, which is fine, but I don't want to, if I've already written him about this, I don't want to rewrite him about the same thing. That would be sort of a bad thing. So let me take a quick look here. Um, um, and I can't tell you what his name is. Uh, and I won't, I won't actually tell you, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, and, um, okay. Um, okay, I don't think I've asked him about, uh, about occultations. Uh, this function that they have. Making sort of double sure here. I hope I didn't say his name by mistake. Uh, I mean, it's only a first name that I, you know, I'll give, but if I did give it, but shouldn't. Okay, so I'm pretty confident now. 
go back over here. After we want to do the, the text. Put a little note here. Name of guy, which I can't tell you. Now, um, I actually did mention this function in a Stack Exchange post, and I'm going to spend more time finding that post than it'll save me being able to cut and paste from that post. Uh, that is a standard process here. We, it is a waste of time. Um, and I think it's actually the post that I plan to give the better answer to. Let's go over here. Let's go to my little cute little face there. Um, terminology, quintuple. Um, okay, we need... I just am actually looking for activity right now. Oh, wow. Okay. I might have answered this a longer time ago. Um, there we are, lunar eclipses on Jupiter. And I actually did give an answer, um, which got 13 upvotes, even though I disclaim right at the top, and I think the disclaimer came fairly early, uh, that it is wrong because it is using a different, the wrong function, basically. The function we're going to complain about now. Um, okay. Uh, I'm very casual here. So the things I want to mention are documentation, confirm, my attempts, spherical only, better way, question mark. So these are the things we're going to mention. While reading the documentation for... Um, yep. And we're just going to copy this paragraph, although, again, I get the feeling we're wasting time. This is going to be... We're reading the documentation for... Um, Um, actually, the function name is this, at and actually I should say while reading the uh, documentation examples, see how fancy smancy I am? Um, I noticed that it says Um, now, th the question is, is the word solar eclipse is actually in there, or did I just imagine that it was in there? <laughs> did I just add it as a comment myself? I d I th it should be in there, because I'm... Uh, if I should have used, like, a, a bracket if I was going to do that, but let's make sure. There it is. Um... However, just to clarify, this function won't find eclipses on the surface, won't necessarily, on the surface of the Earth. Is that correct? I noticed that both the back body and the front body can be modeled as triaxial ellipsoids, but the target body must be, must be modeled as a point. Well, the target must be a point, must be a single point. Is there a better way to find eclipses on the surface of bodies instead of at a central point. Now, here's where I'm going to say, you know, I'm actually, the next thing I'm going to say is actually assuming something that it, that there isn't. So I, ha I wrote something myself. But I've got to be careful because I'm technically asking this question. So I can't, I have to pretend like I don't know the answer. Th I'm pretty sure the answer is no, they don't have that. And they suck. Um, 
Okay. Uh, bclib.h. So I'm going to direct him to um, to what I've written and explain this. And let's go over here. And let's go over here. Okay. And I think it's only one function now, isn't it? Uh, after all this crap w that we did. Oh man. Um, I hope this isn't the function because it's fucking ugly. No, it is. Um. What the hell? What does recommendation mean? Okay. I tried writing a penumbral. It's actually called. In, it's not even really penumbral data. Um, data function. Oh, function that does this. But it only works if all three bodies are spherical. Um, I also realize, parentheses, I also realize this should be bclibs, uh, not bclibh. Okay, so now, um, Okay, so while reading the documentation for this function, I will go ahead and fill it. Oh wow, it actually goes into one line. Um, um, and I will go ahead and do a little bit of my emphasis added here on the surface of the Earth. Is that correct? Um, uh, but the target must be saying, is there a better way to find eclipses on the surface? I tried writing a penumbral data function that does this. Um, um, and it's not super accurate. Okay. Anything else we want to say about, uh, about this uh, function that sucks? I guess we need a subject for this. Subject. Can GF... I want to be really, really ugly here and pretend it's a... It it's originally was a Fortran function, and that's its name. The underscore C is just the C conversion of it. Um, find eclipses on the surfaces of bodies. So that's our lovely subject. Okay, and then let's do a break line here. We don't want to... And this hasn't been sent yet. I will send it in just a minute. But while we're sending it, we can actually... Um, subject. And here we want to make sure we mention uh, NASA's URL. They have one. Um, mention Stellaria maybe, but uh, unfortunately the, c the computations I did earlier um, might not work with the newer version of Stellaria. So Stellaria might not be our proof anymore. Um, uh, spice functions. Uh, mention my spice work. Mention Earth is bigger. Um, which should mean more of an eclipse. The problem is I've already admitted that my function is not very accurate, uh, but in this case I'm using the equatorial radius of Earth, which means if anything, it should overstate a lunar, uh, full lunar eclipse instead of understate it. Anyway. Um, so now let's see if we can find our, we have like a bajillion of them here. Not this one. These moons annoy me. They're too small. Uh, no. I guess uh, 2021 eclipses site nasa.gov. Here we go. Hopefully it'll have a nice little page about the May 25th. I'm sure it does actually. I remember seeing it. 
Um, so which one was it that we said we're not going to be able to see? Um, and I'm pretty sure it was, no, crap, where'd it go? No, it's a lunar eclipse, not a solar eclipse. Um, so that is not what I want. Uh, eclipses during blah, 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 blah. We want them here. And it is the May 28th eclipse. Uh, May 26th eclipse, rather. Okay, that didn't really do what I wanted. Oh, shoot. It's a PDF file. There is a way to do this without going into PDF. Um... Lunar Eclipse 2021 May site nasa.gov and I know there's a page that doesn't require PDF which I hate enough that I don't uh, want to use a PDF. Here we go. Nope, that's going to lead us back to the same place we were in. This is Sorrow Cycle 121. I didn't really know that. I just uh, I just uh, kind of guessed at that. Uh, 2021 Okay, this is the okay. This is the GIF file, which is probably the closest we're going to get. We'll look at the, the PDF file as well. And and the point here is, it just barely skims the top. Um, so let's get this information into our um, into our writing. Let's get the time, which let's go ahead and look at the the as much as I hate it. Let's look at the PDF file, which will have probably more cut and pasteable data than we than we have here. So it's going to be Elon LE 2021 May 26 PDF. Okay. Eclipse conjunction sun at greatest eclipse, moon at greatest eclipse. So these sound like the kind Oh, come on. Come on, this is not an image. I can cut and paste from this. Motherfuckers. Um Greatest Eclipse is going to be 11, 18, 40.3 in Universal Time. This this is bogus, so I should be able to cut and paste from this. This is apparently just an image uh, that they've decided to use. Okay. So anyway. Ah. Um... Oh, and I guess this is the time that it enters the eclipse and leaves the eclipse. Okay, that's fine. Now I need to bring up Evans, wherever the hell it is. Oh, I guess I need to make this go over here to be able to use it correctly. 11.18.40.3. So now our claim is if we're at the north pole of the moon at this time on 2021.0526, um, we won't see an eclipse. There's a portion of the moon that is still sticking out. And then we could use that as an image. Of course, that's not going to be accurate because it doesn't use uh, NASA data. But then I can say, I also saw this result in Spice. Uh, so that's, that's where it's going to be. Uh, that's, where I'm, that's why I'm using it to do this. Um, so let's go to Stellarium. Let's fly somebody to the moon. Wow. I can move this lower, I guess. Yeah. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go to the moon, the Earth's moon, and that's not going to be here, of course. And the Earth's moon is, I think, just listed as moon. So actually, Luna is the name of our moon, if anyone cares. And in this case, I'm not going to go to the center because uh, I, need to, um, I need to show that there's no eclipse at the North Pole. So that is going to be important here. We need to set the time to May whatever the hell it was. I need to have a better memorization skills here. Uh, and I think it's 21. And the time's not going to really matter because we are going to go ahead and look for... Nope, we're going to look for the Earth. Oh, nice. It's shiny. And something's wrong with this time because the Earth is going to be nearly... Oh, no, the Earth's going to eclipse the Sun, so it's going to be new at the time of its eclipse. And that will be at... 
05, 26, and about 11, 18. So we have 05, let's go ahead and get to the correct date. Okay. So now we can actually, I guess we do need the exact time here. Um, 11, 18, 04. Four. Now the moon is one second off time from us, but um, hey. Um, is this thing too low for me to see the uh, rest of it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we need to actually go to 11, 18, 24, and we need to stop the clock there. We will go ahead and stop the clock. Then we will go to 11, 18. Oh, that didn't really stop the clock now, did it? Oh, I should have clicked it only once. Okay, sorry. My bad. Okay, so this is within one second of when they say the maximum eclipse is. Clearly, from this position, it is the sun is fully eclipsed. But now, let's move around a little bit. Let's go further north on the moon. If this doesn't work, I'll be actually kind of disappointed because I, I was... This is what I did last time and it did work. So let's go ahead and go over here and change the, the, the uh, this. 50, 51, 52, 3. Oh, oh, there it is. Now this is, this is where it gets funky. Now obviously I can't go beyond 90, this will let me go beyond 90, but I can't really go beyond 90. So 90, 0, 0, the moon's north pole. Uh, that could be 0, I don't care though. That's fine. Okay. And so the problem here is, let's go to the sun. Um, the very tippy top of the sun, that's okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Is it control S? Yeah, it's control S. Okay. Uh, And I think that's all we're going to need out of Stellarium today. Um, I kind of wish there was someone in chat. Let me see if there is anyone in chat. Hopefully this won't violate your privacy. Uh, maybe just bots, I don't know. Um, I don't know how well the stream is going because my other machine is cranking away with these occultation calculations. Uh, and usually if there's a high load on the machine, uh, the video doesn't come out really great. Uh, from, for other people, that's what I've heard. I don't know if that's actually true. Um, is Lunar Eclipse of 26 May 2021 really total? Guy's name, which you don't can't know. Um, while trying to improve, well, let's shouldn't say that's not what I'm doing. Um, while trying to write a function that computes eclipses on surfaces of bodies, I ran into an unusual situation. Um, it appears that the lunar eclipse of 26 May 2021 is not quite complete. Um, unless, I'm going to be humble here, I'm misunderstanding the definition of complete. Uh, and I probably shouldn't say complete is not, because it's, that's not the word they use, it's total, unless I'm misunderstanding the definition of total eclipse. More specifically, um, If you're at the Lunar North Pole, um, at at the time of greatest eclipse, 
And I gotta get this right because there's a difference between universal time and uh, the times they use. 201, 2021, 05. UTC. And I need to make sure that's what they're saying because it, there is a difference. Um, okay. I'm bringing up too many damn things, I think. Um, and TD is terrestrial dynamic time, which is the time we don't use. Okay. Um, a small portion of the sun still visible at least according to Stellarium. See attached. And now this, I need to make sure, I'll put it in big quotes here. Attach! So I will make sure to attach that, uh, that file that we just, uh, that we just screenshotted. Okay. Um, this would mean at least a small portion of the moon is not completely darkened. Um, uh, um, although it is heavily darkened. Which, to me, means this is not a total lunar eclipse. Am I incorrect in this understanding? I realize Stellarium uses uh, different uh, planetary positions oh, and moon different position, uh, different, um, realize Stellarium does not use C spice for computations. Um, but I ran the computations with sp C spice and got a similar result. Um, okay. Not you, but I've got smoke in the um, my computations assume the Earth is spherical, but I use the equatorial radius, which should overestimate, uh, a, you know, a lunar, a total eclipse, not underestimate it. Um... And I guess it was going to be nice if I would put something like, thank you again for all of your help with blah, 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 blah. Um, um, let's see. Even the diagram at... Um, let's see how big we can make this. Even the diagram at, and then I'll go ahead and mention the PDF too because I want to sound smart, which is the same freaking diagram, by the way. Um, shows it's a close call at best. And let me go ahead and mention the PDF, wherever the hell they, come on. Here's your stupid PDF. <sighs> and in this show that it's a very close call at best appreciate your help as always mission point um So now I'm going to actually kind of fudge this a little bit. Over here, I'm going to put in um, uh, thanks again for all of your previous help with C Spice. And then, so in this one, I'm going to thank him at the beginning. At the other one, I'm going to thank him at the end. That is, uh, that's the way to do it. Okay. I did mention the Earth is bigger. I did mention Stellarium. I did mention the NASA URL. I did mention that I did this in Spice. 
uh, and then this is kind of irrelevant here. Okay, so we are at least able to put in a complaint to uh, to NASA about this, a complaint and a question. Okay, I'm feeling kind of spiffy, so let's go ahead and uh, insult the people at Sky and Telescope magazine. Subject. And by the way, if you're wondering where the hell we have this uh, Sky and Telescope, we have the URL, I think, in README stream, which is where it not really shouldn't be, but it's Sky. Oh, we don't. All right. Oh, is it Sky and? There it is. Um, and so let's go ahead and go over there. And and I think I intentionally didn't go to a specific almanac because they are PDFs or something stupid. Um, and they are. Okay. <coughs> Which means we already have them. Okay. And we'll go ahead and do it for 2019 because they don't really do it for 2020, bastards. Um, okay, what are we doing? The subject's going to be something about you suck, but you know. Um, what are we going to say here? Jupiter, uh, Jupiter, lunar phenomena appear for 2019 appear inconsistent. Dear Sky and Telescope Magazine, we're not going to say that. I downloaded from, and that's this URL here. We're done with you. Um, and noticed something Noticed a f uh, I'll go ahead and say something unusual here, and then later I'll say this actually happens more than once. Uh, more than once. Okay, what is it unusual that I noticed? God, let's find out. I don't remember. Um, now that one's going to be in downloads because I did not... Um, uh, let's do dirt PDF. Okay, that's not cool. I know I downloaded it. Where did the frick did I put it? Um, it's let's see. I'm gonna find it using some magic tab 2019 PDF. Um, I'm going onto my other machine to find it, which is cheating. I ooh, what the hell? Oh my god, did I actually never download it and I just kind of saw it in the browser? Uh, let's yeah, that's not good. Let's save link as. We always want a permanent copy of shit like this. Events web jfin. Um, okay, and so the problem we noticed earlier was that moons go behind Jupiter's shadow but never come out of Jupiter's shadow. Um, let's see. And so this is the thing we're going to put it in our answer is saying, by the way, other people are interested in eclipses of Jupiter's moons as well. So for the four major moons, you can actually use a reliable source instead of the computations I made. Okay. Casting its tiny black shadow. An occultation or an eclipse begins when the begin a transit or a shadow passage begins at ingress. Each event, these predictions are kept some French guy. All right. Occultation of the satellite behind Jupiter's limb. EC for an eclipse by Jupiter's shadow. Um, okay, so that's that's the issue that we're going to deal with. Um, and how to write nasty emails. Okay, maybe I could not f that up so badly. Okay, and then the the important thing here is there is a. Uh, Occultation or eclipse, um, there. Okay, so the, what the problem is, as we're hopefully going to find out in just a second, um, I think it comes with the very first one. The It disappears as an eclipse over here. Um, uh, 
but it never never comes back. So let's go ahead and get that one. Well, it actually does come back, but it comes back like really, 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 really late. Okay, so we have um, IO disappearing, so we would now expect to see IO reappearing uh, after it's been eclipsed by Jupiter. Um, what kind of worries me here is this, it says that the uh, occultation of the satellite behind Jupiter's limb. So if there's an eclipse and it goes completely behind the limb, are they not counting that as an eclipse end? Um, and if they're not, that means I un don't un I'm not correctly understanding what's happening. Um, so at six, we, we say it goes, um, it recurs. So this should be fun. If we can see these from, um, from Stellarium, this might cast some light or haha, <laughs> because they're eclipses, do the exact opposite of cast some light. Ha! Uh, cast some shadow. That's not nearly as funny as I thought it was. Alright, let's see if Stellarium... Oh, no, 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 no. Let's see if st this Stellarium will do what we want. And it's going to whine at us as it always does. Uh, yeah, we get it. Okay, so this time we're going to be on Earth. It doesn't really matter where on Earth because Jupiter's far enough away that that's not going to be an issue. And then we're going to be at the very, very beginning of it, like one, and we're going to start right at the beginning of time. Um, I think it's 4.06 that they said, but let's go ahead and go to 3.21 and shut down the clock real briefly. Okay. Ah, one click. And let's look at Io. Can I do Alt tab to go backwards? Nope, Shift tab. Control tab. Wow, no. Object, IO. This one. Come on. Why, oh, why? I guess I'll have to search again now. IO. That one. Okay. Okay, wow, uh, this is thrilling. Let's go ahead and fix our mount so we don't keep spinning. Um, okay, so according to these guys, and again, Stellarium may not match the same thing they do, but let's see what let's see if we can understand what this is. 408 IO will start being eclipsed by uh, the. So I don't know if that means it goes behind Jupiter's limb or it comes out. Let's find out. 408. Um, we're relying a lot on Stellarium here. So at 408, nothing happens. That's brilliant. Um, let's see if any time soon after that it actually uh, becomes 100% um, illumination. So we're expecting Jupiter's orbit, Jupiter's shadow to eclipse it. And something tells me they might not display that. And then we expect it to recur from behind Jupiter at 655, and the next time anything happens to it is the next day when it gets shadowed. <sighs> oh, when it actually casts its shadow. Transits Jupiter. Okay. It's possible that if you're on the Earth, uh, it's not going to show shadows of Io. So let's move our viewpoint to Jupiter. We're already doing bad things now. In the center of Jupiter, let's see what this looks like. Um, okay. Not great. Let's go back four hours. Okay. So as viewed from the hell is that? No, that's not 55 Perseus. That is... Is that Io? 
Must be, right? That's huge, though. Um, what the hell is this huge freaking object here? Oh, that's the, um, that's because I have, uh, ground turned on. That's why. All right, there we go. And there's Mr. Io. Um, it is at about 50% phase. And so what, according to this, what happens at 408 is it gets eclipsed by Jupiter. So let's, let's see what happens. And in this case, we're hoping that from, um, Io itself, nope. Not even close. Not being eclipsed at all by Jupiter. All right, so this is not cool. So now I'm unsure whether we should complain to Stuxnion Telescope or not. Uh, we certainly can't complain that it doesn't show uh, an eclipse that Stellarium shows or Stellarium doesn't show because Stellarium uses completely different coordinates. Uh, I guess uh, one point of interest would be, what does my program say about these eclipses? Um, assuming it's gotten far enough in, into that to, uh, to do that. So let's see, 501, it is, wow, it's still in 1934 for IO. So um, we don't know, well, of course, we can run it ourselves here for just this one year, for 2019. And... Let's just see how many, how bad we can make this. Okay. Segmentation fault. No, I think I quit out of it, didn't I? Anyway. BC, occultations, 501, from 2019 to 2019.01, because we're just looking at the very first one. Okay, so according to me, it goes into partial eclipse at 314. Now, we've got to be careful here, because these times are delayed for Earth. Um, so 408 and then recurs at 655. So this actually might end up being in like 1231 or something on the previous day. And actually, I don't know if I want to go through those computations right now. Um, so I'm going to put this on our to-do list. I would like to compute Earth time as well, and only because we want to match the sky and, sky and telescope. Um, okay. Um, and let's see. Okay, one slight problem I had here is um, I use the same terminology for BC. Uh, BC Central, uh, the, the first the spice occultations as I do for uh, so for BC occultations dot C I say I print P plus T plus T minus P minus I do the same thing for BC spice occultations which I don't want to do because um, I want to sort of intermingle them uh, so people can look at them all in time order so here we need something else we need central partial plus I don't know what the hell that means, we're just going to say it. Central total plus, central total minus, and central, whatever the hell this is, central partial minus. So this is actually important because uh, we do not want, we do want to be able to intermingle these results to see how close they are to each other, and we cannot do that um, if we use the same term, if we use the same marker for both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is working correctly. Um, Okay, I got them both to compile on the other machine, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to spit out the results at the same time, uh, but at some point we will spit out these results as well. Well, maybe we'll do it at the same time. Okay, uh, we have been streaming now for an hour, hour and 49 minutes, which is fine. Thank you for watching the stream, and goodbye for now.